Welcome friends. Today we are going to study the different types of foundations and net applications. Before starting, let us understand the term foundation in building construction. The building structure is basically of two parts. The structure above the ground which is called as superstructure and the structure below ground level is called as substructure or the foundation. The substructure or the foundation transfers the load of the superstructure to the ground evenly and keeps the structure stable. The loads are transferred to the ground through footings which are at the base of the columns. The selection of the suitable foundation depends upon factors like One, loads from the structures. Two, type of soil. Three, type of superstructure. Four, type of adjoining structures. Depending upon the bearing capacity of the soil and the depth of foundation required, there are two types of foundations that are made. Shallow foundation and the deep foundation. Shallow foundations are footings which support small and light structures. The term footings are used only for shallow foundations. Broadly shallow foundations are those whose complete process of casting is seen as shallow foundations. They are also known as open footings. These foundations are normally up to 3 meters depth. It can be more in favorable conditions. Deep foundations are foundations made at greater depths for buildings having larger loads and the bearing capacity of the soil is less. Shallow foundations are further divided as follows. 1. Continuous or strip footing. They are used for load bearing structures. 2. Isolated or the pad footing. 3. Combined footing. 4. Eccentric footing. 5. Strap footing. 6. Graft foundation, which are further divided into. A. Flat plate type. B. Flat plate thickened under column. C. Flat plate with pedestals. D. Two-way beam and slab type. A. Cellular construction. F. Basement walls is rigid frame. Deep foundations are mainly of two types. 1. Pile foundations. 2. Casein foundation. In this video we will be studying in detail the shallow foundations. Continuous or the strip foundations. These foundations are generally used for load bearing structures. Load bearing structures are constructed in stone masonry or brick masonry. Therefore these foundations are either in stone masonry or brick masonry. The foundation rests on a PCC layer 150 mm thick. The width foundation of the stone or brick masonry depends on the depth of the foundation. The minimum width should be at least 150 mm bigger on either side of the wall of superstructure. If foundations does not support greater loads. Isolated footing or the pad footing. These footing are given below an individual column. These columns rest on PCC layer 150 mm thick. Reinforcing bars are provided in both the directions. The reinforcement of the column is above the reinforcement of the footing. The concrete is casted either in step form or in trapezoidal form. These type of footings are generally used when the height of the superstructure is less or the safe bearing capacity of the soil is greater. Combined footing. When a footing supports two or more columns it is called combined footing. When the columns are closely placed the individual footings of these columns will overlap each other. Therefore it is better to provide a combined footing. Combined footing are of two types. Rectangular and trapezoidal combined footings. When the load transferred by both the columns is nearly equal then a rectangular combined footing is provided. When the loads transferred by both the columns are unequal then the trapezoidal footing is provided. The footing near the column having higher load will be wider than the other side. 
The center of gravity of the footing as well as of the columns should be same so that the loads will be evenly distributed to the soil. Eccentric footing The footing which supports the column eccentrically are called eccentric footing. These types of footing are provided where there is existing structure adjoining to the structure to be built or it's the end of the plot. The total load is transferred on one side of the column. So there are chances of overturning and therefore more steel is provided to balance the loads. The concrete can be casted in rectangular form or trapezoidal form. Strap footing A strap footing comprises of two or more footings of individual columns connected by a beam called strap. When a column is near or right next to a property limit, a square or rectangular footing is concentrically located under the column would extend into the adjoining property which may not be possible. In that case, a combined footing with a strap is provided. The strap beams restrains the overturning of the eccentric footing. If a strap beam is provided the steel in the eccentric footing can be reduced as required individually.